I'm Rena Danley, and coming up on Church Spotlight today, we're at Woodhaven Baptist Church in Ocean Springs. Sam Johnson, welcome to the show. Well, thank you, Rena. It's good to be here and appreciate you being here with us today. Oh, well, it's my pleasure. What's the story that led you to Woodhaven? Well, um, I was in Atlanta, Georgia, serving in a church in Atlanta, and I was going to New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary's extension there, and uh, they ran out of opportunities for me to go to class, and so I had to come home to finish my degree anyway, so uh, I left Atlanta. My wife and I, we moved home in uh, August, and um, the following April, uh, God called us here to this church. We served here for about six weeks just preaching, su supplying for six weeks. And at the end of that six-week period, the church issued me a call. And so we've been here 14 years uh, is... this past uh, April. Oh, that's a, that's a great landmark. 14 years <laughs> at one, one church. That's one long, really great. That's a long time. It is. It is. Well, now you said you came back home, so you are a local. Yes, ma'am. My family is from Hurley in the Franklin Creek area. Oh, okay. And so um, my wife is from Franklin Creek, and um, we uh, got married right out of high school, and uh, she's my high school sweetheart. And uh, when we got married, I started traveling as a construction worker. And um, we went all over the country, and we settled down in Atlanta. We, we stayed there about, uh, about 14 years. We lived in the Atlanta uh, metropolitan area. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was there that I got saved and gave my heart to Christ. And then uh, God called me to ministry, and I started school, and I ended up here. Yeah, Br brought you full circle. Full circle. Yeah, that's Back a great story. Now. So you didn't always know that you were going to be a pastor? Oh, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. <laughs> Okay. I was a construction worker for right out of high school. Mm -hmm. uh, it's what my dad did for a living, and uh, I just naturally picked it up and went into that. And uh, I loved to travel and, and uh, just did that for a long time, a mm -hmm. uh, matter of about, about 17 years before I gave my life to Christ. All right. Can you look back, though, and see how God orchestrated and brought you through different turns in your life to bring you here? Uh, yes, ma'am. He's had his, his hand on me and uh, the things that he's taught me uh, through the years has prepared me. Uh, nothing happens by coincidence. God has, is sovereign, and he knows exactly what he wants to do with our lives, even if we don't. Sure. And uh, every step along the way, he's prepared me for uh, this place and this time to be able to serve him. And so uh, it's been a very exciting journey, and it's not over yet, thank goodness. Yeah. And uh, we've got a lot to learn and a lot to do. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, pastoring here in Ocean Springs, I know we said that you were a local, but you haven't always been in Ocean Springs. But I love the town. It is just such a quaint little town. It almost takes you back to a different place and time. And so tell me, what's the unique things about pastoring a church in Ocean Springs? Well, the, this is a great family-oriented community. Uh, our families support our schools very well here on the coast. You can go to any elementary school or the middle school or the high school and uh, there's multiple times that the family unit is there together, a husband and wife or mom or dad. Um, it's unique that uh, there's a lot of people that's lived here a long time and so it's still got that, um, that historical background of mm -hmm. certain families and certain folks that have lived here for a long period of time. We get a lot of military folks moved to Ocean Springs and um, great um, 
patriotic atmosphere, mm -hmm. supportive country, and, and so you put all that together and it does make Ocean Springs unique mm -hmm. in its own way. Yeah, so what is the congregation like here? Um, is that a good representation of, of the congregation you have? Well, traditionally, yes. Uh, we have uh, a lot of military folks that come through our congregation. Of course, they're here for a short time. Uh, we're multiracial. We have um, uh, several different nationalities here now. We have uh, some folks from Korea and from China. Um, we, uh, for some reason, God is, is bringing a multicultural multi background here. Mm -hmm and uh, all folks are accepted and uh, we just love people the way they are. Right. So how do you minister in that way? You know, how do you make it, um, you know, I know you said the Lord brings them here, but how do you as pastor make them feel welcome and how do you minister to them? Well, uh, as you and I were talking off camera, uh, my wife and I have been involved in foster care and involved in the community. This is a very community-oriented church. We are in our community as much as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that we've done is adopted children from foster care. And um, our daughters are, uh, let's just say, unique. They're, they're not like my son and my birth children. And um, that has given us an opportunity to cross cultural lines and to show our love. I think as a pastor, uh, the gospel teaches us that the key ingredient to the gospel is love. Oh, yes. If you just love people mm -hmm. and you're genuine with your love affair for them, uh, cultural backgrounds can be crossed very simple. Right. They just diminish. They just go away. That's your, I love what you really said at all, and it's about love. You know, if, if the greatest of these is love, and if we can just love like Christ loves, then every other boundary and div dividing line, like you said, will just... It just melts away. Right. Um, I tell people all the time, Jesus only sees one color. Sure. And that's the blood of Christ. Right. And whether we've been uh, cleansed and washed and the blood of His sacrifice has been applied to our lives. If that is the case and we've accepted Him and accepted that, then He doesn't see nationalities or cultures. He sees um, His sacrifice. On us, and so if you believe that and you live that, there's no reason that we should mm -hmm. have boundaries and barriers and right. um, you know communication things we can work through. Right. Um, we've got a lady that started coming to our church from uh, uh, South Korea, and she told me she said my English is not very good, and I said so join the crowd. Mine's not even. <laughs> And being from the South, it's, right. it's unique. And so right. we laugh, and, and she's, uh, she comes and she fits in. She's very comfortable here. And uh, it's all about love. Right, right. And, you know, like I said, you, you, you nailed it right there with the one word, and he sees us as his own. And that's just the bottom line. And so, uh, you know, to welcome any and all here is I think speaks a lot of, of you as a pastor as well, you know, and, and I'm sure that that was brought out as being foster parents because, you know, it takes a special person to have that kind of love that can love and let go, you know, as well. Well, I've learned through the scripture that he that sins much is loved much. And when you come from a very sinful background and the, the mercy of God and the grace of God has been administered to you, and you've been forgiven of much, you've been cleansed of much, um, you have a large amount of love to give toward other people. And so uh, I'm very thankful for what God has done in my life and, and uh, I just want to love folks. All right, beautiful statement. There's more to come. We're gonna continue our conversation right after this. Stay with us. Welcome back to Church Spotlight. Today we are at Woodhaven Baptist Church in Ocean Springs with their pastor, Sam Johnson. Welcome back to the show. I've enjoyed our conversation so far, talking about the fact that your church is all about loving others and, and being a part of the community and being multicultural and just breaking down the walls and the divisions. So how long has the church been around and have they always been this way? Well, the church was established in 1974. Brother Zeno Wells at Jackson County Baptist Association had a vision 
to plant a church in West Jackson County. Um, uh, there was a subdivision being built uh, called Woodhaven. Uh, this was outside of the city limits, actually, beginning uh, at the church industry. And uh, Brother Zeno uh, went to find land and property, found this piece, and, and the, the association, along with the, the founding congregation, bought and purchased this land. They put double-wide trailers on it, actually, uh, years ago. And their purpose in ministry was to minister to the folks at Woodhaven, West Jackson County, and the Ocean Springs area. Of course, we've grown and been incorporated into the city. Mm -hmm. um, we have still kept that as part of our mission statement to minister to the community and to this area. Um, there's been seven pastors here, not counting myself, in a 37-year span. Um, I think that uh, they have all purposed in their hearts and worked very hard at ministering to this community and trying to make an impact mm -hmm. for Jesus in this area. It's almost been the purpose of the church to It has been with. the purpose of the church. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we're picking up the, the gauntlet and we're trying to carry it on. That's right. That's and, uh, right. Run the race. Active. Yes, run the race and finish it. <laughs> that, that's right. We're not finish finished it. yet. There's still a lot of things we've got to do. And so um, uh, this has been a great fellowship uh, that's been based on love, a lot of family, uh, a lot of, of the, uh, of the uh, founding families. Uh, some of those members are still here today oh, and really? chartered members. And so they have been very faithful and mm -hmm. devoted to the church and to the, the community. And so we're excited about that. It's got a great history. And uh, we're looking forward to what God's going to do in the future. And a great future, right. It's a great Passing future. Passing the baton to the next generation. Next generation. <laughs> well, you know, you mentioned um, the, the term, a lot to do. So, so let's talk about what the church is doing. Let's, let's first talk about what it's doing inside the four walls. Okay, well, we have services, uh, two services on Sunday, one Sunday morning, one Sunday night. Um, we have Sunday school uh, in the morning before church starts. We have a blended worship style where we use some of the old hymns, but we also use some contemporary music. Our music director is uh, part-time, Brother Pete Christman, and he does a great job of blending those two uh, music styles together. Right. Um, we are a Bible-believing church, and um, uh, we preach the, the scriptures, and we expound on, on the scriptures. Um, I'm probably a dinosaur. Um, I'm an old hellfire and brimstone is my style. Mm -hmm. um, I get very passionate about the Word of God. Um, and I'm not afraid to let that passion be seen. And so uh, we have a great time. We're going to share the Word. Our people are very loving. Uh, we're a very prayer-oriented uh, prayer church. Mm -hmm. We have prayer before our services. Uh, we have prayer if we need to in the middle of our services. Whenever God says pray, we need to pray, we pray. Right. And so um, it's just a great opportunity uh, for folks to come and fellowship and, and um, um, partner with us to, mm -hmm. to reach our community. Let's talk about the children, children's church, youth, maybe. Okay, we have, um, we have children's church during our worship time in here. We have uh, couples in our church that volunteer one month every uh, year to spend that entire month working with our children in children's church. And they go, we have a metal building behind this building, and they go back there and they teach them music, songs, and they teach them scripture. Mm -hmm. uh, they help them with memorization. They have games they play. They have snack time. And so while we're in here, the adults are in here, we have children in the back. We have children's church from kindergarten to fifth grade. Uh, we have nursery that's provided for children under kindergarten ages. And um, our youth department has uh, just started um, a ministry called Mission Possible based off of Philippians uh, 4.13, which I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And uh, our, our students uh, want to be challenged to, uh, to be the next generation mm -hmm. that can live for God in a very corrupt world. They want to stand for Him. And so we're about to kick that off in uh, mid-August. Uh, be an opportunity for students to come on Wednesday nights and we'll have worship time and we'll have uh, Bible study time where we can study. We have a lot of things that we're doing uh, with our youth. We, uh, we go canoeing and kayaking and uh, we're taking them to um, 
Paul B. Johnson State Park in a few weeks to uh, just go fishing and to fellowship, have some right. time together. And so we're excited about what God's doing in that area with our children and with our youth. Yeah, that sounds that sounds very active, and you've got to be active to keep them, <laughs> you know, involved. Yeah, very active, yeah, especially with teenagers and right, children. Right. Uh, in this day and time where you got so many games and so much competition from the world, you've got to provide opportunities for kids to come and to have as much fun at church as they do it's true. anywhere else. It's true. It's all about having fun, um, you know, at that age group, and you know, and. You've got to mix that in with the Word of God and, and put things on their level to reach them. Well, they've got to learn that being a Christian can be fun too. That's right. That's right. Uh, there wasn't nowhere in the Scriptures that say that we can't have fun as children of God. That's right. That's right. Well, let's, let's jump then. Let's jump to maybe the, the Middle Age and maybe also the Golden Age, what you have going on here. Well, our, our adults are very active in, in things outside of this church. Um, we have Bible studies, of course, for all age groups. Um, we have a very active senior adult group. We call them the Joy Ministry. Uh, they are constantly searching for things to serve our community. Uh, they work with our local hospital uh, during their uh, uh, during special times of the year. They bake cookies and uh, whatever the hospital chaplain needs done at the hospital. Uh, they, they work constantly to try to help them out. Um, right now, they're currently uh, doing cookies and cakes for the Seaman Center at the Port of Pascagoula to give out to the seamen that come in. And so they're very active. Our men and our women's ministry, we have a women's conference here every year that's directed just toward women. It's called The Beauty of a Godly Woman, and uh, we have speakers and music, and it's geared just for women. Mm -hmm. uh, our men are very active in the community in the areas of construction and mission work. Uh, we just completed uh, repairing a, a widow woman's house uh, that had a roof that was leaking, and uh, our guys got together and went over and repaired it and uh, got it where she wouldn't have to worry about rain. Of course, we've not had much rain, but uh, they, they're very active. Our guys are very active. We work in our community when we see there's a need in some way that we can help someone mm -hmm. uh, that can't help themselves. Um, we do what the Scripture says. We give water to those that are thirsty and food to those that are hungry. Right. And the Scripture says take care of the widows, and we try to do that. Mm -hmm. Well, and it goes back to what you said earlier about loving, and you can't necessarily always love just inside the four walls. You've got to get out there, and you've got to be God's hands extended, and uh, you've got to touch Him with His love, and it sounds like y'all are doing that, meeting the needs. When you hear them, you're there to, to be His hands extended. Well, Katrina really helped us a lot with that. Uh, our church building was not affected as much as some others, and uh, for two and a half years, we housed teams and fed teams and housed them so that they could work in our community restoring homes. We actually partnered with the church from Indiana to build a house, rebuild a home mm -hmm. uh, here in Ocean Springs. And uh, God used that to show us that it's not just in great tragedies that we should be doing those things. Right. We can do those things throughout the year because there's always needs uh, sure. by people. Right. And so uh, we try uh, to a point, you know, as much as we possibly can as a small congregation right. to take care of the needs of our community. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's not always necessarily a need that you use to, to, to meet somebody, you <laughs> no. know. We have what we call water and well ministries. We have some tents and, and we take water and we go to Fourth of July celebrations and we hand out water. Uh, we've handed out water at Mardi Gras. We've uh, handed out water during uh, uh, the car shows cruising the beach, yeah. uh, cruising the coast, I believe it's, right. it's called. Uh, we get out and we try to, to, we try to get our church out into the community as much as possible. Uh, we have a great ministry. Our senior adults and our middle-aged adults do a great job. We, four years ago, had the opportunity to, to uh, uh, feed the Ocean Springs High School football team. It started out as just a few games, mm -hmm. and um, it led into us partnering with them to feed our team pregame every Friday night before they play. And so they get to come here and I get to share with them uh, things concerning character right. uh, to try to encourage them uh, to become young men of character. Mm -hmm. And then we feed them a home-cooked meal every Friday 
And it's a big undertaking for such a small church, but oh, our yeah. folks do such a wonderful job with it. And um, we, we really just, we're part of this community. We're a church that right. is part of this community. Yeah, it sounds like it. Now, how long have y'all been doing this? We've been doing the football team for about uh, four years, if I'm correct, it may be five. Right. Uh, years catch up. That's fabulous. Love well, that. we enjoy it. Yeah. We really do. Yeah. Uh, we love young people, and we want to be part of their lives. Go Greyhounds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll be right back. There's more church spotlights, so stay with us. Welcome back to Church Spotlight. Today we're in Ocean Springs at Woodhaven Baptist Church with their pastor, Sam Johnson. Welcome back to the show. Well, I'm glad to be here and appreciate you being here and your fine uh, TV station. Well, thank you so much. It's been my pleasure. Um, we've talked about the congregation and a lot of the things going on inside and outside of the walls, but let's talk about future events, maybe some upcoming things that the church is doing here. Okay, great. We're, we're planning right now to have VBS, Vacation Bible School. We'll start July the 25th through the 29th. It'll be nightly. And uh, we want to invite everyone to come, regardless of when uh, you can come. If you miss one night, we want you to make sure that you can bring your children and you can pick up on the night that you can make it and uh, stay with us the rest of the week. We'd love to have you. Grabbing the last few hours of the summer, right, the to last, have VBS. <laughs> Look, we go back to school the first week in August. I know. And it's, uh, it's so quick. And so we always try to get a last week where we can get children, uh, give them one more uh, opportunity to have fun right. and, to, and to learn about God's Word. Right. The summer just gets shorter and shorter. Well, I think time gets shorter and shorter. <laughs> It just seems to fly by. Right. Uh, we're also in a building program. We're uh, planning to expand the front part of our church here, and uh, we're raising funds for that and waiting on bids to come in, and uh, we'll have to change our parking lot and the design of it. And so we're very excited about what God's doing with our facilities here. We're also planning a youth discipleship weekend August the 13th through 15th in Collins, Mississippi. We'd like to invite all teenagers to come and be part of that. You can uh, just come by here at the church and start hanging out with us and fellowshipping with us. And uh, we're going to spend uh, a weekend canoeing and uh, spending time learning what God says about being a true disciple. Uh, we're also planning for Thanksgiving. Our church does a Thanksgiving meal at the Haven, the Women's Center for the Home of Grace. And we prepare Thanksgiving lunch for those folks and uh, take care of them. And then we do what we call Christ Christmas here in, in Christmas time, uh, where we gather gifts. Our congregation provides a gift for people in the community that are, um, are needy, and we make sure that they come by and that we can uh, help them, uh, help their children have a great Christmas. So we've got a lot of, a lot of things happening right. in the upcoming months. Mm -hmm. And speaking of the, the short summer, the fact that school's about to start, that means football's about to start. That means football's about to start. Yeah, right. I don't know if y'all still do Coach's Corner, but it'll be right up on you before you know it. Uh, we start the first week in August, and I think our first game is the Jamboree the 19th. Mm -hmm. And so we'll start preparing food and meals for the, for the team. And uh, that goes all the way through the end of the season, hopefully all the way to Jackson. There you go. That's right. Wish, uh, no, I'm not going to say wishful thinking, but just, you know, positive thinking. Positive thinking. Take it one game at a time. That's right. Well, before we go, give us your service times. Be glad to. We uh, have services on Sunday morning. Sunday school begins at 930, and then our worship service begins at 1030. And Sunday afternoon, we have worship at 6, choir practice at 5, and then Wednesday nights, our services start at 630. Uh, we have youth and children and uh, prayer meeting in here in Bible studies. So we have something for everyone here at Woodhaven Baptist Church. Okay, great. And before we go, uh, give us some contact information in case they want to uh, find out about VBS and the youth camp as well. What's right. the contact? You can contact us at our website, www.woodhavenbaptist.com, or you can call the church office at 228-875-3971. Uh, there's not a secretary here. You can leave a message. We have voicemail. Our VBS will be July the 25th through 29th, and I'll be from 6 at night until 8.30 at night. And we'd like to invite everyone to come, even if you can't make every night, at least bring your child for one night. Okay. Brother Sam, thank you so much. Linda, thank you so for much, and thank you for being here. All right, and I thank you for watching. Be sure to watch next week as we spotlight another church making a difference. Until then, I'm Rena Danley.